What's up, you mother suckers? This is your African king of comedy, Michael Blackson. Right now, you're watching fanaticviews.com. Get jiggy with it, you mother sucker. Man, it, it's, it's so crazy, man. You know, now that my nephew is a New York Giant player, me being raised in Philly and being an Eagles fan pretty much my whole life of knowing sports, it's difficult. I mean, you know, you got to support the family, you know, but supporting your family and where your heart is is two different things. Whenever they play each other, believe it or not, I want the Eagles to win. You know, I, 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 want, I want my nephew to have a good game, but I just want my team to win. At the end of the day, it's my city, is my team. You know, because, hey, three, four years from now, he might not be with the Giants. Then what? But I will always be an Eagles fan. So I guess I got to... You know, I think Eagle is always first on my list. I, and, and I realized that when I went to the game, when I went to the game, I went to the, I went to the game when they played in New York, where they played the Eagles and the Giants, and I was cheering for the Eagles. I was, you know, and they don't, people didn't understand why. They had no idea sitting next to me, knowing that's my nephew, but I'm, I'm like undercover cheering for the Eagles to win, you know. Um, but, I mean, hey, it's, and it is, it's a sport, it's a game, it's, it's a job. And he's there to do his job, and I definitely love the Giants for picking him and making him the tenth pick overall, and taking care of my family. You know what? Um, he's having he had a very good rookie season. I expect him to be even better this season. My nephew, all this guy does is study the game. He just loves the game of football. He sleeps and eats football. That's all he thinks about is football. And, and, and when that becomes your mentality, man, you just have no choice but to become great because you just learn how to become better at every play. And, and you know, he has, I went to some games where he got, you know, burnt a few times, you know, and that's part of being a rookie. And there were some games where he was incredible. You know, I remember games against, you know, the, the playoff game against the Packers. He started off very good. He was so incredible and then towards the end you know things got a little out of hand and then with the pittsburgh i think the pittsburgh game against the giants i think that was his really coming out game that's where he got his first interception so what i try to do is compare him to any cornerback that was picked before him and i, I and i'm also very good friends with jalen ramsey played for the jaguars and he uh you know and he he was what number three or fourth pick or something you know, he was definitely in the, you know, in the top few picks, maybe five. I think he was five. Um, and he only, he only had one interception, just like my nephew, and he was number 10. So I'm like, okay, well, interception, interception, they both got the same amount. You know, I'm not too sure on the tackles and everything else, but my nephew, I think, is more physical. And, you know, I'm, I was very impressed, you know, and I expect him to be better. You know, I hated the Cowboys more back in the day when they were just so great. They were winning everything, you know, and, and that's what you, I'm a hater. So haters hate people that are better than them. So I became a hater. Yes, I was a hater, like a bitch ass mother sucker. <laughs> you know, but, you know, then besides last year, then the Cowboys became terrible. And then when the team become terrible, you kind of feel sorry for them, but they're still your rivalry, and you just still want to see them just keep bleeding and being bad and terrible, you know. But then this, you know, last year, Zeke Elias, a good friend of mine, you know, he went to school with my nephew. The great all came out at the same time. Even the quarterback, is, you know, is pretty cool with me. You know, we're pretty cool. And, I mean, I, 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 it was good to see your friends do well. And, you know, I don't hate them. It just depends on who they are playing. You know, if they're playing a certain team, you know, I mean, when that, I don't care. Whoever's playing the Eagles, I want them to lose regardless. You know, but when your friends are playing, you know, and I mean, once the Eagles became out of the playoff, you know, then I kind of want to see my friends do well. Yes, I don't want to see Cowboys win because it's still my rivalry. We still hate them. But I, I like the city of Dallas. I come here very often. I come to Dallas at least three at least three times a year. And Dallas pay a lot of my bills. I mean, I can't hate this city. The women are wonderful. They, they, all the guys are cool. And they, they, they love their Cowboys. You can't blame them for that, you know? But it is what it is. I hope y'all lose this year.
Tom Brady was a cheater for a very long time to me. You know, um, I mean, even going back to when they played the Eagles in the Super Bowl back in 2004, 2005, whatever the year was, and with that whole um, spying thing they had going on for years, I really think they should have stripped the Super Bowl off them that year, those years, and gave one to my Eagles. But it didn't. So he was a cheater for a long time in my, the, not just him, the whole Patriots to me were all cheaters. Now what it did in 2017 Super Bowl, that was some great stuff right there. I mean, he went from being a cheater to me to being probably the greatest quarterback of all time. With that comeback that he did, I had no choice but I like, take my hats off to the guy, you know, and I was really impressed. He's still a cheater, but he's the greatest of everything. He's the greatest player, the greatest cheater. He's, a, he's great at what he does. You're a great cheater, man. You know the crazy thing about it? Uh, the Eagles have disappointed us so long, and I feel bad, especially with following my nephew last year throughout. I, I was never into college football as much. And the reason why I wasn't into it as much till the last couple of years was because they didn't have a playoff system. Since they had a playoff system, I love that idea. I, I like to see underdogs beat the good ones. I mean, I watched my nephew go to the college playoffs, beat Alabama, which they weren't supposed to do, and beat Oregon like they weren't supposed to do, and won the championship. So because of that, I followed him, and when he became a giant, I kind of like sneakily following the Giants. You know, I was happy with the Eagles. I'm happy they got the best out of those two quarterbacks because the other guy definitely sucked to me. Well, the Rams, no disrespect, but with due respect, I have no respect. The, whoever the Rams pick, and they had the first choice of picking this quarterback, and they picked the wrong one. It's kind of like Ryan Leaf and um, Peyton Manning back then, you know? It's, you've been lucky in picking the right person. And unfortunately, the Rams picked the wrong mother sucker. I'm impressed. With, I, like, I like Wentz. He's going to be good. You know, um, and it's, it's the thing about with, with being a quarterback, if you want to win a game, the less mistake you make, the better chance you have of winning. And look what he did. He was 4-0 or 3-0 the first three games because he didn't throw one interception. He didn't make a mistake. As long as he avoids making mistakes, he's going to be good. I like his physicality, I like that he's mobile, I like he's accurate, and I think the Eagles have a future with this guy. You know, um, I know we picked up the, the guy, from the, the Jeffries from the Bears, you know, we, uh, we picked up my boy Torrey Smith, I'm good friends with him as well. And you know, we went and got a, a running back from the Patriots. We have a team that's just full of cheaters and winners, you have to take them apart. So, you know, grab one guy from there. Hopefully another team grab. Just grab everybody from the Patriots. They'll just be left. Man, they, if, if the Patriots, as long as they got Brady, man, they're going to win. So it doesn't matter who they have, you know. But I'm, I'm impressed with what the Eagles did in the draft. I forgot that who, who they picked. As, I know we picked up a very good defensive end in the first round. And he was supposed to probably go. Fuck. Sorry. All right. You set your thing went apart? Uh, no, we're still good. We're still growing. Oh, we're still, still on. Still growing, yeah. I mean, I'm impressed with the young players. I like the draft pick. I like also the free agents that they picked up. And we're just going to see what happens. Uh, well, no. Well, one time I was in Chicago. I, was, I went to host an event, a party. And a transgender girl, I didn't know she was a transgender. And I later found out she's a very popular transgender. This girl looks like a really bad chick. You know, she came and took a picture with me, you know, and I had no idea to after I was done taking a picture that I just took a picture of the transgender. You know, but if I knew that she was, would I have still took the picture? With her, probably not, because she's been known as taking pictures with people and then putting in a block as if she dated them. So it would depend on who it is. You know, if it's somebody that I know, maybe that singer, whatever, that Seinfeld didn't want to hug, maybe there's something about her, you know? It's not that we don't want to hug our fans or take pictures or do stuff like that, but if you, if you come with bad news, I don't want to be next to that kind of news, pretty much.
You know what? It, that rumor has been going on for a long time. I, I know recently, I think Ice Cube mentioned an interview that is going to happen. You know, I hope it happens. When it does happen, I will 100% be in it. I mean, we, I know we got phone calls about three, four years ago about this, just to make sure everybody was still where they were. And then we didn't hear nothing else about it. And then, you know, now it's back surfing again. So hopefully it happens. And if it does happen, you'll definitely see me in it. I mean, me and Ice Cube became really tight lately. I actually on, on a show that he produces called Hip Hop Squares. I don't know if you guys watches it. It comes on VH1 and he produces a show and he, I'm like their favorite person on the show. And we, in fact, me and him are currently talking about trying to develop a TV show for me. You know, so hopefully Friday comes out, you'll definitely see me in it. Whenever it does happen, I have no idea, no date, no time. I can't tell you nothing. You mother sucker. Talk to Ice Cube. No, no, I mean, recently, I've, I definitely have a lot of moments to be proud of. I mean, recently, I've pretty much been selling out everywhere I go. You know, and that has a lot to do with my social media presence and, you know, fans coming to the show and realizing that I'm probably the best stand-up comedian on stage right now. And the thing about comedy and anything else is all about word of mouth. So when people hear the word that Mike is the funniest guy on stage, people will tell other friends and tell their friends. Usually I go to a city and I'm doing like maybe six shows at the Improv or something, you know, Maybe the last day won't be sold out yet, but those who come to the show will tell their friends. Next thing you know, the rest of the shows are sold out. It's all about word of mouth. So I'm really impressed with my, my performance, you know. And comedy, it comes with, you become better with age and time. The longer you do it, the better you get, the more comfortable, the more you care less. And the less you care, the harder you go, because you don't care about nobody's feelings, nobody, nothing. And I think I got better. I got much better on stage. So I'm really impressed with my stand-up.